Please welcome Nazareth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming tonight. Wow. Sold out. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You know, I love, thank you, Crossroads, for having us. This is awesome. This church is getting so big. I'm afraid when you start calling the prayer hotline, you're going to get a guy from India to answer <laughs> the phone. People say, what do you do, Nazareth, to prepare for this? What do you do a week before to prepare for this? I stay off the 91 freeway. That's what I do. Anybody drove on the 91 freeway coming here? And they still have construction on it. You know, these people when they die and they're running to the gates of heaven, they're going to be orange cones that will lead them to hell. Because <laughs> the whole freeway system in California is the work of Satan. <laughs> you think of Satan as someone who's wearing a red suit and a fork. No, he's wearing an orange suit and a shovel. <laughs> But uh, to those that don't know me, I am from the Middle East, but ever since September 11th, I feel so Mexican. <laughs> you know, I fly a lot and I always miss my connection flights because I can't run at the airport anymore. <laughs> if you look like me, don't run anywhere. <laughs> People will tackle you. In the name of freedom. <laughs> like when you guys travel, you check the weather channel, we check Homeland Security colors. <laughs> hey kids, it's orange, we can't take a vacation this year. <laughs> you know, I feel my job as a Christian is to comfort you on the plane. It doesn't work. How many of you have flown since September 11th? Aren't you glad I was not sitting right next to you on the plane? I don't care how Christian you are, you get nervous at 30,000 feet next to me. I had a priest, a priest, sitting there, he goes, you're not Middle Eastern, are you? I go, yes I am. Because <laughs> it's your allegiance to this country? I said, yeah, I want to die here. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? We used to be your 7-Eleven people, remember? Where did we go wrong? We stayed up all night for you people. The Koreans went to bed at nine. We stayed up all night. <laughs> we took your camel jokes, your slurpy jokes. They didn't bother us. I even have little kids come make fun of me. This girl comes to us. Do you know where Middle Eastern people go when they die? I'm like, where, honey? Heaven 11. Ha! Get out of I prayed. I said, Lord Jesus, what do I tell airport security? And God said, Celine Dion and Alton John. I go, come again, Lord. I don't speak Hebrew. And God said, when you sing, you don't have an accent. It's true. So now I don't talk to airport security. I sing to them. <laughs> I look at the officer and go, hello? Is it me you're looking for? <laughs> I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> he goes, where are you from, boy? I go, this land is my land. This la <laughs> what are you doing here? I believe I can fly. <laughs> you sound me least and Feliz Navidad. <laughs> You know, I tried everything, nothing works except nobody is scared of a girly terrorist. <laughs> so now I go to the airport, go, hi, who's going to frisk me today? <laughs> Let him go. Because <laughs> I fly, I fly a lot. I was in Texas the other day, any Texans in the house? I was in Frisco, Texas, and... Uh, and the cowboys think they can intimidate me. This cowboy comes to me and goes, hey boy, I know where you're from, so don't be doing anything funny, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> I'm a Californian, I don't own a gun. <laughs> and then after the show, they have fireworks, and he comes to me and goes, hey boy, you have fireworks in the Middle East? I go, yeah, but they come down. 
And then I went to Canada in December. Minus 40 degrees in Calgary, Canada. And the pastor goes, it's a little nippy. <laughs> nippy, I'm from California. We evacuate in this. <laughs> if you can die at room temperature, that's not nippy. <laughs> I feel sorry for marriages over there. Can you see the wife going, honey, I don't feel your love. You don't feel my love. I don't feel my feet. <laughs> And then I was invited by Ramstein Air Force Base. Our, where's our military people? Raise your arms. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. They invited me to Germany on the 10th year of September 11th. Me to Germany. I thought they're trying to deport me nicely. And they go, you're going to have about a thousand soldiers, you know, you know, airmen. I'm like, I hope I'm not a flashback or anything. <laughs> And I did that. They briefed me on everything except they didn't tell me it cost half a euro to use a public restroom in Germany. Half a euro! That's why some Germans over there look angry. <laughs> They're not angry. They don't have change. <laughs> but I like when I travel, I like to encourage people. The other day I was flying to Fort Benning, Georgia for the army base. And I'm, I left Ontario early. I'm rushing through air, the, what's... The, Dallas Fort Worth Airport, Terminal 4, true story, I'm running trying to get to my plane because I'm late. I remember I'm starving, I didn't eat any food. So, um, so I go to this place called, uh, it's a cafe called Eau de Pain, which is uh, French for stomach cramps. <laughs> so I'm, I'm there and I feel the Lord, I'm like, can I have a pastrami sandwich? And God just whispers to me, he goes, encourage someone. I'm like, Lord, if you encourage the pilot to wait, I'll encourage someone. <laughs> So I'm looking, everybody looks happy except for a heavy set, you know, African American lady with short hair, no apron, no name tag, nothing. And she started making my sandwich just depressed. I'm like, that's her. So I look over the window and she goes, get off the glass. I'm like, just, I want to tell you, God loves you. He has a plan for your life. When you were born, your mommy thought you are the most beautiful girl in the world. And don't forget that because I tell my daughters, don't fall for the standard of beauty that this world gives because you're beautiful just the way you are. And I was proud. Yes. Yes. Looks up to me, goes, dude, my name is Gary. Thanks a lot. Funny one, ha ah, ha, Lord, thank you. <laughs> My name is Nazareth. I was born in the city of Nazareth in Israel. And it's a family tradition to name you after the city. I feel sorry for my brother Waikiki. <laughs> my other brother Albuquerque. <laughs> and my sister Buffalo. <laughs> Location, location, location. <laughs> My first exposure to this country 30 years ago was a small zoo in Cleveland. I paid $20 to see an elephant, a camel, a bull, and a donkey. In my country, that's a car dealership. <laughs> But I love this country because this is the only place in the world where you can take French toast, English muffin, Canadian bacon, and call it the all-American breakfast. <laughs> Because it's, you know, I, I lost weight. I've been on the Fannie Mae diet. I lost my equity, my 401k, and nothing to roll over anymore. <laughs> because, uh, you know, food is getting expensive. Did you notice that? It's expensive. The other day, I went to Albertson. My wife gave me 12 items of grocery. You know, I get to the counter, $160 for groceries. And the cashier looks at me, she goes, do you want to donate a dollar toward hunger? <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> a can of peanuts is $15. Isn't peanuts means nothing? <laughs> I go, how come it's expensive? She goes, well, gas prices are up. Well, tell me where they grow it. I'll go pick it up myself. <laughs> then she goes, you want paper or plastic? No, I want a gift box. Wrap it up. <laughs> Put a bow on it. You go to Walmart. Why pay more? Because you charge me more. 
I went to pick up a hobby with my son. He's 15. I said, we're going we're gonna to try to connect. So we went to Big Bass Pro of the 15 freeway. You know, and they have hunting stuff. Anybody hunts in California? Do you guys hunt? You guys hunt? Wow. I mean, I didn't know we hunt here. So, so I went to the place, and I, I, I don't know about hunting. I asked the guy, what do you hunt for? He goes, ducks. <laughs> ducks? What do you dress like bread and wait at the park? <laughs> I don't know. So we're looking, a rifle, a gun is $400. How can our gang members afford it? <laughs> and then you can't just buy the gun and go shoot the animals. You have to wear the camouflage outfit. So if you get lost in the forest, no one can find you. <laughs> By the time you're done, it's like $1,000. It's cheaper just to go, hey, go to a petting zoo and say, hey man, do you have an old deer I can stab? <laughs> Expensive, yes. But I, I, I don't know. I just, I just, I. You know, I, I love being in America. I love being here. Do we have any illegal immigrants here? <laughs> Turn the cameras off. Turn the cameras off. <laughs> we are welcome at Crossroads anytime. <laughs> you know. I, I became a citizen, you know, I went to the immigration in Los Angeles many years ago. And when you walk inside there, they give you a small American flag made in Korea. <laughs> and the judge comes in and, you know, and I, had, I, had, I needed a translator because my examiner didn't speak English. <laughs> Thank you for getting that one. Because <laughs> you know what? You guys don't speak English. You speak American. I'm serious. It's hard. You guys have to be careful of your slang. Some people overseas think you're cannibals. I'm serious. They're scared. You go, someone, hey, this American guy told me, he said he wants to have coffee. He wants to pick my brains. <laughs> How long of a cotton swab does he need for that? <laughs> hey, can you help me? Can you keep an eye out for me? <laughs> no. I can't keep an eye out for you. It will dangle or something like that. <laughs> Can you lend me an ear? No, I can't. <laughs> Give me a hand. Leave me alone. <laughs> I'm just pulling your leg. Don't do it. <laughs> and what do you, get, you do when you get sick? You toss your cookies. <laughs> get a frisbee or something. <laughs> and, and you worry you sweat bullets. Is that how you get your, your weapons, people? You sweat bullets? And then, you know, the other day, I, and I get tired. It's, it's tiring to speak uh, American. Because you have to jump into conclusions, and you have to bend over backwards. <laughs> and you try to make ends meet. Don't do that. <laughs> That's not hygienically right. <laughs> I know our government is trying to help people make ends meet. Don't. Keep them separated. <laughs> Keep your head in the game. <laughs> I was doing a show, a guy comes to me, he goes, break a leg. You break a leg. Because <laughs> you're so funny, I busted the gut. <laughs> well, call your doctor. <laughs> oh, you're so funny, you crack me up. Why don't you guys crack zigzag or down? Why up? And then when you die, you either kick the bucket or go out with a bang. <laughs> so next time you see a foreigner say, hey, you better speak English or you don't have a leg to stand on. <laughs> and I first came here, I went to order some steak. I asked the waiter, I said, I want a steak. He goes, what kind? I go the back, the neck, the leg, I don't care. <laughs> he goes, you want sirloin? You want tri-tip? You want a shank? You want... Why do you guys have all these names? Does the cow know that? <laughs> Have you ever seen a cow walk in and say, oh, I fell and I hurt my tri-tip. <laughs> oh, my filet mignon is swollen. <laughs> Does this dress make my brisket look big? Because, <laughs> uh, you know, I love food. 
I love to eat, and I'm an American, so don't tell me what not to eat. There's a lot. I'm serious. You know, it's good. We live in California. A lot of health stuff. Anybody got a fat letter from the government for their kids? They're sending letters saying your kids are fat. I'm serious. That's not their job. You know what? I want to. You know, I went. I'm sorry. <laughs> You know, I went to Santa Monica. I was ordering, uh, I, or, I went to a cafe. They had burgers and fries, and they have tofu and, and health food. That's wrong. That's like having Israeli and Palestinian food at the same place. <laughs> the food good, but the client's going to clash. So I went and ordered cheeseburger and fries and a bottle of water. And I'm eating my sandwich. I'm the only one in the place. And they have tofu. Anybody had tofu before? Ew, it's the whole day you feel like you had a jar of Vaseline. Ew, I had tofu. So anyway, I'm eating my sandwich. Here comes a bicyclist, not a Harley. Those bicyclists, the matching, you know. He was so skinny, his, his spandex were baggy. And he had the helmet on, he was eating, eating stucco. Those, you know what he called rice, rice cakes? And then... He goes, I'm having a carrot juice. That's all I'm having today. That's what they, they tell everybody what they're eating all day. They're just bragging about it. I'm like, good for him. And then he looks at me. I kid you not. He goes, ew. <laughs> I'm insecure, people. I'm like, me? He goes, ew, look at that meat. Why don't you just go bite a cow? I'm like, okay, Lord Jesus, stay out of this one. Uh, I know what you're going to tell me, Lord. Turn the other cheek. This guy has no cheeks anywhere in his body. <laughs> I'm not turning anything. God said, leave him alone. He's on cleansers. <laughs> and you're right. He left. Came back, looked at my ball of water. He goes, great. Plastic. That's great for our green planet. I go, sir, I watch Discovery Channel. Our planet is blue. <laughs> But I, but I love this guy. I, you know, food. I have allergies. Anybody have allergies? You know, I'm allergic to pollen, dust mites, Nancy Pelosi, Lady Gaga, <laughs> everything. The, the, no, really. I'm, uh, I went to a doctor and he looks at me. He goes, "You're allergic to sand." I'm like, "I'm from the Middle East. Come again." <laughs> he goes, "You're also allergic to furry animals." My whole family is fairy animals. <laughs> Come on, look at your kids when they're born here in this country. They have no hair, fuzz. Us, when we're born, we look like a coconut wrapped in a towel. Because <laughs> there's only two cultures in this world. There's a Western culture. If you're born here or if you're in Canada, you know, uh, Australia, Europe, you're an individual culture. If you're Middle Eastern, Asian, Latin, uh, African American, you're collective culture. Here, when you turn 18, you want your space, you want to move on your own. You guys love your space. Hey, get away from me, I need my space. And you guys are clean. I have to take two showers a day to keep up with you Americans. Because <laughs> you don't want to be close to people. Get away from me. The more money you have, the bigger is your house, the bigger is your yard, because you love your space. Not here. Here we don't need space, we live together. That's why we can't get jobs. Because every job application have a question on it. Name of nearest relative not living with you. <laughs> we all live together. Here when you go on a vacation, where do you go? Camping, secluded places, away from people. Here, we visit relatives. <laughs> I have so many relatives visit every summer. I called Homeland Security. <laughs> I'm not saying that, officer, but you never know. Here, because you're an individual culture, you have a pet. How many of you have dogs? Look at that. Most of, when, I, when I perform overseas, one over in a thousand have a dog. I have, I have a dog. I have a dachshund. This sausage dog. <laughs> and he's neutered. So I named him Rocky to maintain some dignity for the little thing. 
So one time I was walking Rocky and some vet, veterinarian, and looks at him and he goes, man, he's losing hair, you need to do something. I'm like, hey, my doctor wasn't that upset. Because <laughs> no, take him to us. So I went to Centennial Animal Hospital here in Corona. And I walk in there and they, you know, people think they're real doctors. I'm serious, the nurse was wearing a white, white robe with a stethoscope. And she, I walk in, she goes, hello, pooch. I'm not from this country. I said, hi. <laughs> she got mad at me. She goes, what is Rocky's last name? I don't know. I forgot to ask his dad. <laughs> She's like, what is your last name? I'm not giving you my last name. My dad will roll in his grave if he finds out. I do have a last name, it's R-I-Z-K-A-L-L-A-H. We pronounce it Smith. <laughs> For immigration reasons. <laughs> and then, you know, she goes, fine, I don't need a last name. Um, have you noticed any, you know, like eating disorders for Rocky? Like he's a dog, he'll eat my shoe if I give it to him. <laughs> Come on. She goes, also, one question. Have you noticed any emotional changes on Rocky? I kid you not, they asked me that. I'm like, okay, Lord, keep that one away. Stay out of this one, too. <laughs> I go, I'm, cla I'm glad you asked me that. Because the other day, me and Rocky were just sitting, drinking apple cider. <laughs> and eating corn dogs. <laughs> and he opened up. This pooch is really depressed. <laughs> See, other dogs chase their tails in a circle. He's long, he has to go in squares. <laughs> Wait, there's more, there's more. <laughs> See, Rocky, every time we go by a yard sale, he starts barking. I didn't know why till he told me. His dad left his mom with seven pups. She sold six of them on Craigslist. <laughs> she gave them away for free at a yard sale. <laughs> she goes, sir, I'm done with that. I'm done. I'm done. How are you going to pay for this? I go, oh, I have Rocket's credit card right here. <laughs> but I, but I, I love being American because in this country, you know what? I came to know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. So, <laughs> Amen. You know, I was a comedian and, you know, doing the clubs and everything. And God got a hold of my life and changed my life. And to me, it was like, before I was a Christian, I was like a car that keeps breaking down. Now that I'm a Christian, I'm the same old car. But now I'm married to a mechanic and I have triple A. <laughs> That's my translation of my Christianity. God changed my life. And I was single. Any single people in the room? I was single. I made a deal with the Lord. I said, Lord, you know more girls than I do. So you find me a wife, and I'll go evangelize through comedy. I'll go do your thing through comedy, but you find me a wife. I made a deal. Because I didn't know how to meet a Christian lady. What's my pickup line going to be? I agape you, you weaker vessel. <laughs> you look hotter than the lake of fire. <laughs> you got your glorified body already. <laughs> You remind me of the verse that said, love thy neighbor. I'm afraid someone will look at me and say, you remind me of the verse that said, depart from me. I never knew you. So I prayed. I said, Lord, I want a beautiful wife with a rich father that memorized the entire Bible. But let your will be done. And I waited. And in 1995, my father was dying at Hogue Hospital in Newport Beach. He said, son, when I die, would you go do me a favor? I said, what? He said, would you go to Israel for me? I said, I'll do it. He said, would you go to the Gaza Strip for me? I said, no. <laughs> You've heard of the Gaza Strip? People with uneven facial hair going dust to America. And they're wearing a Nike shirt. <laughs> Separation of apparel and state. This is funny, last week I was in D D.C. doing a show called Forget for Love for government workers. And there were a lot of, you know, D.C. government workers out there. And um, 
It's funny, I was trying to explain to them capitalism. I told them, this is what capitalism means. Do you know what capitalism means? Capitalism means from the day you're born till the day you die, someone's going to sell you something. <laughs> you're born and the huggies and the pampers people will come after you. The diaper people. Then Fisher Price will come after you. <laughs> then if you're a boy, Nintendo and Sony will come after you. If you're a girl, Mattel and Barbie will come after you. Then the whole world will sell you stuff. And if they can't sell you anything, they sell you insurance. <laughs> Never buy insurance from a Christian insurance agency. Because to them, everything is an act of God and they will not cover it. <laughs> yes! And they sell you stuff. And then you get old and the drug companies will come after you. Then the Huggies people will come back. <laughs> And then you die. And they sell you that too. <laughs> Miller Mortuary is a sponsor, so no, they're very nice. They sell you that. <laughs> but you know what? It's just, so I was standing at my table, and this comes this guy with a suit. I knew who was CIA or FBI furloughed. And he just said, he looks at me, he goes, You're from Israel? I said, Yes. He goes, I love Hamas. Like, what? He goes, I love Hamas. I'm like, you do? He goes, yeah, with pita bread. <laughs> Thank you. I thought you were trying to arrest me or something. <laughs> but anyway, that's what reading the Gaza Strip. It was 99.9% .9 Muslims. So, but I, oh, I promised my dad to go. So when he died, I flew into Tel Aviv, drove to the Gaza Strip. That night, I'm having dinner with my cousin, his fiance, and her sister. And, I, and they look, he looks at me, he goes, do you look happy? What's wrong with you? I said, you know what? Christ changed my life. He gave me hope, a reason to live. He knew my darkest secrets, still loved me. And he goes, shh, shh, don't listen to him. He's a born-again Christian. Her sister said, me too. And I go, would you like to marry me? <laughs> Just came out of my mouth. I didn't mean it. Just came out of my mouth. And she looks at me, and she's gorgeous. She said, I've been praying for a believer to come to this side of the world. Let me pray and fast for three days. I'll get back to you. <laughs> three days later, she came back. She goes, I'm starving. Let's do it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. God answered my prayer. Yes. Yes. One day I was single. 24 hours later, I'm planning a wedding. God works that way sometimes. He can change your situation in 24 hours. He can. He's done it so many times and he can still do it. Don't, don't give up on that. Yes. We got engaged. And I came back to the U.S. a year later. I went back. We got married. And you know what? The, the wedding was just, you know, we had 600 people at our wedding. I didn't know any of them. That's the culture. And at the end of the wedding, they all line up in one line and give the bride jewelry, mostly gold. That's the culture. By the time they were done, my bride looked like Snoop Doggy Dog. <laughs> or Mr. T, you know what I mean? Gold chains, gold rings, gold watches. I spent three weeks in LA after the wedding going, hey man, you want to wear a gold watch? <laughs> Hurry up, it's not stolen. I just want a toaster, okay? We've been married 17 years. I love her more today than when I met her. Yes. Yes. M marriage is great, people. Oh, it's beautiful when you do it God's way. We've been married. You know, what makes our marriage strong is we pray together. But men pray first. Lord, thank you for my wife. Whatever stupid things I say and do, she forgets about him. <laughs> as far as the east from the west. And for that, I am thankful. And she prays, Lord, thank you for Nazareth. I know you love him so much. You want him in your presence right now? <laughs> Would you use me as a vessel tonight? <laughs> to accomplish thy will, oh Lord. <laughs> Come back. My wife is into candles. We have so many candles, the Vatican calls us once in a while. <laughs> but they always, you look at candle stores, they have candles like, smells Irish Spring, French Vanilla. They don't have any candles smelled after the Middle East. You don't go, hmm, smells like Iraq. 
What is that, Afghani gunpowder? <laughs> but you know what makes a marriage strong? Have your in-laws move in with you. Yes, it will make you strong. You become teams. You and your wife against them, even though they're nice. I don't care, they're nice people. But you and your wife become a, te a team, you know. My mom lives, I love my mom, she lives with us. But you know what? You know, we can't fight out loud. We can't argue because someone's living with you. It's hard to have a mom and a wife and two daughters in the house. I have estrogen dripping from my ceiling. <laughs> in the form of tears, you know what I mean? So we can't argue a lot. So I come home, she's like, she comes, come here, 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 close the door, put the mattress against us. She can hear us. Like she's sleeping, she can hear the space shovel. Did you see what she did? She took the vase out of the kitchen, put it in the living room without even asking me. It's not her house, she can't do it. Well, I'll tell her not to do it. No, 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 I love her. I don't want her upset. I don't want to upset her. I'm just venting out. Well, I'm a man, I need to vent out too. No, 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 you know what she does? She does, why aren't you listening to me? Because I can't hear you, that's why. <laughs> well, she keeps telling the kids, don't do this, don't do that. She's not their mom, she can't tell them what to do. Well, you're not my mom, you're telling me what to do. <laughs> ah, don't slam the door loudly. But I love my mom. You know, now that our son is 15 and a half, at one day he's going to go to college. And my wife started feeling that. She's, women, moms feel it already. She's like, two more years. Two and a half more years, he's gone. See, I remember when I was 18, coming to the U.S. in 1819. You know, my mom was a tough lady. Never told me she loves me, but everything she did proves she does. Never told me she loves me. Never. But she loves me so much. I know that. To this day, she lives with me. I know she loves me. But you know what? When I was 18, I was at Kuwait Airport, ready to leave. And she just was walking. Not a tear. She's like, come here. Come here. Come here. I'm like, oh, she's going to say it. Come here. Don't smoke, don't drink, don't do drugs, don't watch dirty magazines, okay? Okay, mom, I love you. Go. Okay? Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Don't smoke, don't drink, don't do drugs, and don't watch dirty magazines, okay? Okay, mom, I love you. Go. So I went, never said she called me every day for a whole four months. How are you? You're doing good? You're eating? Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> Nothing. That's all she said. Then four months later, how are you? You know, if you lie to your mother, you're going to go to hell. You know that. God loves mothers and you lie to mother, you're going to hell. You know that. Yes, mom. Do you have any cigarettes around? <laughs> yes, mom, I do. Ooh. Do you have any alcohol? Yes. Any dirty magazines? Yeah, I have Cosmopolitan and Playboy and all that. You're a bad son. No, mom, I work at 7-Eleven, okay? <laughs> I love, I love my, my, my mom is five foot. She doesn't want my wife to take her shopping. She wants me to take her shopping. And she loves Macy's, the women's department. And you know, and I'm allergic to fur and linen and all that. And I drop her and then she goes, come back in half an hour. Never use the cell phone. So I'm always looking for her at the mall. She's the same height as the rags. <laughs> so I'm at Macy's, mom, mom. Mom, mom. I'm like, oh, you lost your mother, young man. <laughs> but we have three sons. You know, not three sons. I have one son, Newport Beach. I have uh, my daughter, Carol, after, you know, because we went to Lamaz when John was born. Anybody been to Lamaz? It's a French word that means don't waste your money. The baby's going to come out anyway. <laughs> And we call them Newport Beach, John. And then two years later, we have baby Carol. And then seven years later, we have Tally, baby Tally. Tally is Hebrew for oops. <laughs> a blessed oops, you know what I mean? So now I have three kids. I'm a dad. How many fathers we have in the room? Pray for us. Look, we're, we're you know, it's hard to be a dad. 
It's hard. I come home, one is on the computer, one on the iPad, one on the iPhone. I have to call them by their username to get him to listen to me. <laughs> yes. And that's all, you know, our life is based on Wi-Fi. Are we going to your uncle? Does he have Wi-Fi? We go to people's house, what's the password? What's the password? You have Wi-Fi? What's the password? <laughs> Relax, kids. One day I said, we're done with electronics. We went to Big Bear camping. They're going at night next to the tents. Do you have Wi-Fi? <laughs> what's the password? <laughs> the other day I rented a car, a Ford Explorer. I'm driving, I push a button by mistake. It says, what temperature? I go, 70. And the air conditioning went on by itself. Wow. I pushed another button. I said, what station? I said, 89.7. And it went to the station by itself. And then my friend goes, that's all technology. Yeah, but I'm a dad. It's nice to be listened to. <laughs> Without arguing. Oh. My dog doesn't even listen to me. My dog does something really weird. I have to share it. I'm sorry. You know what? Every time I eat dinner, we have a glass door that leads to the, to the, to, to the outside. And every time we're eating dinner, this dog goes, turns around, looks at me, and starts doing his thing eh, while I'm eating dinner. I told my wife, look, he's doing it again. She goes, he's a dog. He doesn't know how to. I said, yeah, he's doing it purposely. And he grins like, eh. <laughs> So now I'm putting jalapeno in his food. So <laughs> He's not grinning anymore. But my kids came to me, this, the little one's still like, Daddy, can you make us a car that can fly? I'm like, honey, I'm not Henry Ford, and if I make anything that flies, we'll be deported. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I see, my son loves to play this game, Mod, Modern Warfare 2. Anybody have the Xbox or Modern Yes! It's a game where our soldiers go to like insurgents and shoot at them, you know. The graphics were so good when I played, I ended up shooting two people I went to school with. <laughs> they were like me, but with bandanas, you know what I mean? <laughs> and my kids like to fight sometimes. Anybody have siblings that fight? Good, we're not alone. You know, it's normal. But you know what? I'm like, hey guys. My desire is that you would know Jesus. So sit down, let me read the Bible to you. Just a minute. You sit here, you sit here, stop it. <laughs> and Jesus said, if someone hits you on the right cheek, you give him that. Ah! What happened? He hit me that. No, she poked me in the eye first. No, he hit me that. No, she poked me in the I'm like, shut up! <laughs> let me tell you about the love of Jesus, okay? <laughs> but it's not fair, he hit me. No! Stop it. But that is not, wait, I recommend this to every parent. I have National Football League cameras installed in my house. I go, wait right here, let me review the play. <laughs> After further review, it looks like your hand touched her shoulder right before her finger hit your cornea. John, go to your room, Carol, first down. And then my daughter loves One Direction. Any Directioners in the house? Ah! Five boys oh, from England. They're fantastic. They sing like this. Ha, 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 ha. And my daughter goes, look how talented. Talented? This guy has an inflamed appendix. <laughs> Call 911 for him. Last month, their movie came out. We went to the movie theater at the crossing. You know, 500 girls screaming, me and my daughter. She sees her friends, she leaves me and goes sits with them. <laughs> yes, I'm sitting by myself watching the movie. <laughs> Moms are coming, you weirdo, what are you doing here? <laughs> and then there's a guy by the name of Justin Bieber. Anybody know the Bieber? When this guy was 15, he wrote a song, Baby, Baby, and the lyrics says, I've been looking for you all my life. You're 15! You don't even have a driver's license. <laughs> you need your mom to drive you around looking for her. <laughs> Did you look outside of your school district maybe? <laughs> maybe she qualifies for the Amber Alert or something. <laughs> but 
You know, I, I just want to encourage you a little bit quickly because it's good to laugh, but I want to encourage you a little bit. Many years ago when the economy hit in 08, 09, things were going really, really bad for comedians because everybody wanted to book comedians. They're like, we're laying off pastors and we're laying off staff, but yeah, come and do comedy. No, nobody wanted us. And I prayed and my wife said, we're doing, you know, you're doing comedy. That's it. Don't do anything else. So we stayed, you know, at that and... The banks were like, oh, we have big mortgage. And so I started paying as much as I can and slowly started to where I couldn't pay a lot, but I believed personally in my own thing, I have to pay the bank. So I started paying as much as I can. And, and man, the interest just boom. It's like, I didn't know what to do. I was like, Lord, what are, that's a lot. What are we going to do? I, I'm not going to leave the house. I'm not going to do that. And then one day I get a call from a friend. He goes, how are you doing now? I go, I'm doing great. They go, that's not what God told me. What did God tell you? <laughs> he told me you have an issue and you need help. Really? She goes, there's a FedEx tomorrow. Next day, I get a check, $10,000 more than what I owed the bank. Yes! Hope in 24 hours. God can change your situation in 24 hours. Some of you are scared. Some, and I don't want to just do this, and I do this just to encourage you. Listen, if you're a cancer survivor, would you stand up? Let's turn the lights on. I just want to encourage those who are scared. Stand up. All right. Stand up and, and keep standing up. Some of you are scared tonight because you're afraid that you're going through chemo or you're afraid because your parents had it that you might get it or you have a lump on your skin and you're afraid you're going to get it. I'll tell you what, even though, and God for if it happens, I'll tell you what, these people standing here, I don't know them, but I can tell you one thing. They can tell you, I'm glad we went through it because we look at life now in a whole different perspective. So if you're scared, talk to one of them. I... I just, last week I met Linda, Lydia's ma, Lydia's ma daughter, Lydia 24 years ago, she had cancer. What was it, what kind? Uh, cervical cancer. It was a cervical cancer. and the, Actually all over my body. And then when the doctor opens to operate and take it out, he found it, it's all over her body. They said, there's nothing we can do, and they just closed it and said, go enjoy yourself for three months. 24 years ago. She's here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody, anybody lost their business and they said it's over, but now they're back, they're doing better. Would you stand up? Thank you, thank you, thank you. And some of you are afraid, oh, the economy, what if I lose my business? So what? God can change your situation. Anybody? They had troubles in their marriage, but they hanged on. And now they're stronger. Their marriage is stronger than before. Would you stand up as a couple? Here you go. Oh, you think you're the only one, huh? You think, oh, no, my situation is different. People been through it, and they, it can work. If your marriage is on the trouble, give it one more chance. Give it 24 hours more. Please do that. You know what? I have a neighbor. His name is Connor. Connor, last year, same day, almost today. I don't know if his family is here. Are you Connor's family here? My neighbors of Maryland and Summer Tree. Are you? What happened? Connor was hit, was hit by a drunk driver. 23 year old young man was hit by a drunk driver. And I prayed for the family and I didn't, I didn't have the urge to even knock on the door. Kept praying. One day I saw his mom and I said, hey, I've been praying for you. She goes, thank you. She goes, well, I go, uh, so wait, how do you feel? She goes, I forgave the man. I forgave him. I have two other kids to raise. I can't, I cannot not forgive. People go through hard times. Life is not easy. But you know what? There is hope. 
There's hope. God can change your situation. He can help you heal. He can restore things. He's into that. When my son was five and six, we used to act out a Bible story. And there's a Bible story in the book of Acts where there was a, a, a lame man at the beautiful gate. And Peter and John walked by him. And, 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 and he goes, do you have any money? I go, and uh, Peter said, silver and gold I don't have. What I have I'll give to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Get up and walk. And the man got up and walked. And you know what? It was a miracle. Never walked before. And I go, John, you want to play that? He goes, yeah. I said, lay down, John. He goes, give me a cup. So I gave him the cup. He's the lame man. I'm Peter. I'm walking by him. And then it hit me. What if this lame man in the morning had things to do today? And he looked at his list and it's, he said, okay, my friend's going to pick me up. They're going to take me to the beautiful gate. And God, if you're really kind, I normally get 10 shekels. But if you're really kind, would you make it 40? And if you really can do a huge miracle, make it a hundred. And he prayed, not knowing that that day, God's going to do above and beyond what he could really imagine. I'm not in the teaching of wealth and health and all that because I'm this old car that keeps breaking down still. You know what I mean? I don't. But I believe we, God can do above and beyond what you're able. So I walk by and say, John. And he goes, do you have any money? I go, silver and gold. I don't have what I have. I'll give to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Get up and walk. He goes, nah, just give me the money. This is wonderful, wonderful. You know, I'm a dad, I'm a, and I'm a husband. And I, I just, before I close, I want to say something. Does, is there anybody, woman here in the room that have a husband that snores? Would you raise your arm? I want to pray for you. Keep it up. Keep it up. Don't be afraid of him. I have an aunt who died from secondhand sleep apnea. This can kill you, ladies. I feel your pain. You know, you, you were single. Like, God, I need a prince. Would you send me a prince, Lord? And you prayed. And you come in and said, Lord, we're not going to sleep at night. We're going to read the Bible together. We're going to worship. We're going to have fun. And then you get married. Midnight, wedding night. He's... <laughs> And you're still shocked. People who are engaged, tell them you snore. Don't shock them like that. <laughs> but you're still so madly in love. You go, oh God, my honey needs oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> Tilt your head, honey bun. You're making little noises. <laughs> Two years later, you still have not slept since wedding night. <laughs> He's... <laughs> but now your attitude has changed. You look at him and go, God, Moses killed an Egyptian and you forgave him. <laughs> Let's just call it a pillow fight that went wrong. Ah! Five years later, no sleep. You have black under your eye now. You don't even lay in bed. You just sit there staring at him. I don't respect you. Look at you, you oxygen hog. You suck the roof when you inhale. <laughs> and you start reading him like a dog. Roll over! Roll over! <laughs> Lay down! Get up! What? Lay down! <laughs> Ten years later, he has the machine now. <laughs> oh, how romantic. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Fifteen years later. He's old. He got hair in his throat. He's drooling. <laughs> Just look at him and say, God, just take him. I sacrifice him back to you. Just like Abraham put Isaac on the altar. Here you go. And don't send me a goat. I'm going to keep the goat. I'd rather hear bad and... I don't know why I don't snore. I'm from the Middle East. We're like Jewish people. We snore when we talk. Hi, how are you? <laughs> That's why some Middle Eastern women wear veils. It's not religious. <laughs> They're tired of the ah. You know, some, some husbands sound like, well, I asked women, what does it sound like? It's just like what he did. Some women, you know, some husbands sound like a Harley Davidson that needs tune up. I'll be, 
when they put her in fifth, I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> Some sound like a lion facing a hummingbird. It'll be. <laughs> Some of them scare you a little bit. <laughs> Wake up, we have a mortgage. Wake up. <laughs> not in this economy, you're not. Good try, though. Good try. <laughs> I don't snore. My wife doesn't snore either. So we hear every noise that happens downstairs. You know, we have a fridge with an ice cube machine that waits for us to go to bed. I know it. <laughs> then it goes, blah, blah, blah. my wife goes, what was that? I go, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not your macho guy, you know what I mean? <laughs> my macho-ness is somewhere between a military commando and a male synchronized swimmer. <laughs> I don't know. She goes, go down and check. Well, it's your turn. I went the last time. <laughs> but you're the man. What if it's a female burglar? One time I was doing the Grand Ole Opry in Nashville, Tennessee, and they booked me at the Opryland Hotel, very nice, two big beds and everything, and they forgot to book a room for my road manager. He goes, oh, I'll sleep on the bus. I'm like, come on, I have two beds. He goes, yeah, we can't, you're the artist, we're not supposed to. Come on, man, I won't say anything. So anyway, he's sleeping, he's older, I'm sleeping. I wake up to hear someone cutting a tree <laughs> and eating Doritos at the same time. It's like... <laughs> Like, no. Couldn't go back to bed. I put my headphones on, turned it to rap. It's the loudest thing I could get. It didn't help. It was like, <laughs> no, I can't do that. So I took my pillow. I said, I'm going to choke him a little bit. Started walking. He started talking out loud in his dream. Oh, they're coming. Open the door. Run to the car. Start the car. The car won't start. I wanted to choke him, but I wanted to hear the end of the story. I'm Nazar. Thank you so much. Thank you. I. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.